Here with this week's hottest stories in the investment world, this is Zach's Friday Finish Line. Hello and welcome to the Zach's Friday Finish Line. I'm Ryan McQueenie, a content writer here at Zach's, along with one of our editors, Maddie Johnson. Hello. Today is Friday, August 26th, and we're here to recap this week's biggest stories. Yeah, so we've got a full plate for you today, um, including a new music streaming service from Amazon, as well as a broader discussion about the state of the Internet of Things market, Mm -hmm. that very trendy, um, still in quotes, phrase. (laughs) Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, But first we're going to look at a story involving Hillary Clinton, um, allergy medication and free market capitalism. Yeah, yeah. if that doesn't <laughs> <What>? get you excited, <laughs> what a plate full. If that doesn't get you excited about this story, I don't know what will. It's got all of the buzzwords in it. Yes. So yeah, this has to do with a company called Mylon. Um, it's a pharmaceutical company, a drug maker. Um, they trade under the ticker MYL. Um, and if you were holding this stock this week, you would have noticed that uh, on Wednesday. Uh, right around mid-afternoon, uh, seemingly out of nowhere, the stock just tum- took a tumble. Five and a half percent on Wednesday afternoon, it fell. Um, and it, it was really down to this. It, it, it was facing a lot of uh, criticism, found themselves in the middle of this controversy this week um, regarding the pricing of its popular EpiPen allergy medication. So these are these are the people that make EpiPens. Right. Um, also known as the, you eat something that you're deathly allergic to and you stab yourself with it and it saves you. Yeah. And they're what, $600? $600 for a pack of two, which you have to replace, you know, if you don't use them, you have to replace them yearly. Um, you know, if you do use them, refill it. It's quite expensive. And, um, the thing is, is that they've, they've hiked that price up. Uh, quite a bit over the last several years. Um, And this is where Hillary Clinton comes in. Uh, She actually tweeted out on Wednesday afternoon, um, tweeted a link to a longer Facebook post. So there's a a lot of social media going on (laughs) with with Hillary Clinton this week. Um, Kind of this long post about the company and its pricing strategy for EpiPens and how since like 2009 it has increased over 400 percent in price yeah it it used to be more like 100 bucks for the box right when they acquired it um in 2007 it was 100 bucks a little over okay yeah 2007 so so in that time and now it's like 600 bucks so quite a bit um inflation is a thing we we haven't been seeing that much inflation in that time frame so it's certainly not you can't explain it that way 100 (laughs) percent um this all actually started uh, when a senator from Minnesota, whose daughter relies on EpiPens, um, was urged the Senate Judiciary Committee this week to investigate the price increase of the medication. And then Hillary Clinton not only called out Mylan, um, she also demanded that they immediately reduce the price of the EpiPen and use this as a kind of way to... Um, link to her new plan for combating um, prescription drug hikes like this in the future. Um, Basically, her plan centers around the idea of you have to have a reasonable answer as to why market conditions demand that you um, make these these higher price hikes. Interesting. Um, And, and, you know, that that it goes through a review process Mm -hmm. as to whether that's reasonable or not. Um, So... Interestingly enough, this is my favorite part of this story. On Thursday, very quick turnaround on this. This is all Clinton tweeted this out on Wednesday afternoon. By Thursday morning, Mylan had responded with a multi step plan on how to make the EpiPen treatment more affordable for some of its patients. So that's right, impressive. Yeah, quick turnaround. Very quick. Um, the drug maker said it will provide an instant savings card worth $300 to any patient that currently pays full price for the drug. So if you're paying full price for the drug, it's because you either don't have insurance okay. or you have a higher deductible type of plan and, right. and you know just the, the cutoff, whatever, you're paying out of pocket for it. Um, so if you're paying out of pocket for it, you can you get a $300 gift card basically for it right off the bat. Um, 
I hope with, it's not a Visa gift card because those are terrible. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, you can't I think use it's a them comp- anywhere. <laughs> I think it's a company specific <laughs> savings card. Um, so that's about 50% off with the current price tag. Um, the company also announced that it is doubling the eligibility for its patient assistance program. So basically, the patient assistance program is uh, if you if you certain household income cut off, um, in in it, they you get it for free, um, right? Okay, or you're eligible to receive it for basically nothing, as they put it. Um, they're doubling that to now. It's going the level is going to be four hundred percent of the federal poverty line, which I think is about like ninety seven. A family of four household income is about ninety seven thousand dollars. Uh, anything under that, you're eligible to receive that BuPen treatment for free. Um, and they also, you know, made sure to note that they, they give a, give away quite a bit of EpiPens to school systems right. throughout the country. They're continuing that program, um, and they're also looking for ways to open up pathways to get the um, consumers able to purchase directly from Mylan to okay. kind of cut out the middlemen and reduce costs again that way. Um, well, and it'll also be interesting because when and if a generic comes to the market, if that six hundred dollar price tag will go up, sure. Um, and then what can we expect from the generic EpiPen as well? Yeah. So I think uh, the other thing, you know, hovering on this, all the political involvement mm-hmm. here. Um, Clinton obviously using it as a as a way to kind of pitch her plan for prescription drugs. I thought on a side note, the senator whose daughter uses the EpiPen, who kind of first brought this to light, um, she was the one advocating for it in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Turns out, small world, the CEO of Mylan is also a daughter of a U.S. senator. Oh. Which I don't think has anything to do with anything, but yeah. is kind of a weird coincidence. Um, the CEO was on CSNBC this morning detailing, or CSNBC Thursday morning, and was detailing the plan when they announced it, kind of like an interview alongside the announcement of the yeah. plan. Um, and she said she wanted to make sure, first and foremost, that everyone who needed an EpiPen had an EpiPen. So um, I guess light on the other side of the tunnel. I don't know if that's the right phrase for it, yeah. but encouraging to see a company get called out and go, hey, maybe you're right. We can be doing a better job getting patients who need this medicine, the medicine they need. Um, from an investor's perspective, I guess we don't really know yet what this does to the bottom line for the company. Um you know, it might cut into earnings. It might not. You know, the the PR gain they get out of it might cancel out any might earnings. Help boost it even. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely an argument to be made that this is a more of a public relations thing. Um, but interesting to see nonetheless. And you know, looking forward into this presidential campaign, if Clinton continues to keep um, drug prices at the forefront of her campaign because now it's very much in the spotlight definitely um it it is definitely going to be something to keep our eyes on for other companies other companies that might get called out or other companies that might proactively um try to do something about their pricing strategies be interesting to see what our boy martin shirkrelli has to say about (laughs) this Um, (laughs) but yeah uh a lot to take in there. A lot of factors, a lot of players. It was a great story this week. Um, moving on, um, hand it off over to you on these rumors about an Amazon music streaming service. Yeah, so still rumors at this point, but very exciting to think about. So Amazon is, I guess, planning to launch a music streaming service that would be exclusively for its Echo devices. So it's mm-hmm. it's like line of smart speakers. Um, and then according to the the website Recode, the company is toying with the idea of selling this service for 4 or $5 per month, which would make it the cheapest music streaming service on the market. Um, but this service would also be in addition to another music subscription service that Amazon would launch, which would be like 
kind of what we already have on the market. So it would be similar to Apple Music, similar to Tidal and Spotify. Um, it would cost $10 per month, and then users could access all the music they want to stream anywhere at any time. You could download songs for offline listening. Um, so that's like just basically a copycat of what we already have on the market. But this $5 per month service, I think, um, could be something that would really propel Amazon for, I mean, almost make them more of a world dominator than they already are. Mm -hmm. um, but the only thing is that it would be confined to the Echo device. Like you wouldn't right. be able to listen to music on your phone, which is the core of music streaming services. Yeah, you and you covered this story this week and I thought that was the most important point that you made was just almost as confusing that they would limit it to this is kind of where music streaming services have um, made all of their headway over the last yeah. few years. I mean, if you look at Spotify, all of the music in the palm of your yeah. hand as you're on the go. Yeah. Like most of their membership, um, like renewals and like free trial start is on the smartphone. Right. Um, but, I don't, I'm not sure how it'll work because they have, so they have, Amazon has this Echo speaker. Right. Um, we should has, talk about that a little bit more too, for sure. Yeah, it has the Amazon tap and it has the Echo dot. Um, so that's, there's the three, those are the three versions. Yeah. Of, and they're all, they all use that Alexa software. The Alexa right? software, but they don't strike me as poor, like things you would want to take with you on yeah, the go. The, um, the dot is, I think, the only one that that amazon kind of promotes as being the like portable, the portable one yeah. okay it's it, it's uh it has the appearance of one of those small kind of on the go speakers gotcha and is i think the easiest the most lightweight and the easiest to kind of pick up and take with you okay um besides it also being i believe the most inexpensive one I think you're right. I think it may be for around seventy or eighty dollars. Yeah, maybe that yeah. was a guess. Um, but so in my opinion, opinion, I think the only way, if this cheaper music service ever comes to fruition and users can subscribe, you would Amazon would have to lure almost like big name artists for right. exclusive releases on this service for their echo devices okay so, not... and, and just you you're saying that in, in an effort to stay competitive with the i mean apple music is doing that obviously yeah i still i can't put that frank ocean album on my phone yet because i don't have apple music no so. <laughs> i can't <Yeah>. either <laughs> um then you have title that like partnered with kanye west and rihanna and beyonce, beyonce sure. um for all of their latest releases so it just seems at this point, the idea of it seems a little unnecessary, mm -hmm. but it it could be a game changer. Well, yeah, I don't. I guess the 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 only question there would be the demand for it, because you're already you know making it exclusive to Echo devices. The only people that are going to subscribe are going to be people who already own Echo yeah. um, speakers. I highly doubt it's going to be something. That is such an extraordinary service that it, it is the reason you go get an Echo speaker, especially since you can already stream music through your Echo anyway. Can you can you use services like Spotify? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. I, and I thought that was one of the main the main draws of it. The main draws of it is that it is a speaker. Yeah. Too at the end of the day, and you can stream. You you, you there's these apps that are compatible with it, and you can stream music and and whatnot. Um, I thought you made a good point that I want to go back to, though, about it not being a portable thing. Like, the dot is the portable version of it, right? Mm -hmm. But um, so much of the cool element of it is it that it is this in this, like, home automation device, too. So you can link it up with, like, your ther the thermostats, smart thermostats, okay. and you can... You can get um, light bulbs mm -hmm. and light fixtures and things that are compatible with it. Um, when you go on to Amazon's website, they, they make it very easy to, for you to find um, Alexa or Echo compatible gotcha. products. And that's why it's so cool is because you can put it on your kitchen counter and 
it can you can say like hey alexa do this turn on my tv or whatnot yeah um and there's all these different things you can do um and that's why yeah you it doesn't you it's not something you're always picking up and bringing with you you know to go out um and then which very much limits the amount of things the amount of time i would be streaming music with it yeah and it you then you also have to consider all of the I I don't want to say legal issues, but I mean Amazon is gonna have to royalties and the stuff royalties like that. You, they're gonna have to negotiate with the labels and that gets really messy. I mean, look at Spotify. I mean they Spotify it's like something that you love to hate. Right. Um Did we mention already the fact that Prime does have its music service? We serve didn't as, mention it. Not great. Um, it's not great. It's definitely it, that's definitely not something that why someone would sign up for prime mm-hmm. um they only have like oh just over a million songs mm-hmm. um you know and i guess that's the question really is and we don't know because again this is all rumors so the, we're not getting a lot of amazon commenting on these yeah. types of things but uh the question really is you know did they see something like you know prime video or the prime music service or this music service or any of these things do they see them as cool fun things that prime users can use to get, interact with amazon more frequently or are they pushing it as the reason why you sign up for prime um and i think that they made this push with prime video where they're putting out exclusive shows and now all of a sudden maybe you know you want to watch the man in the high castle or, or whatever and you have to get amazon prime mm-hmm. to do that um well you but, can also i think you can subscribe to their video service yeah like, just, a la carte. yeah, yeah. Um, so or if not that's launching soon yeah definitely um i don't know there's a lot going on and kind of wanted to use this just as a as a pivot um because you know as we mentioned earlier with the internet of things this cool new subsection of technology um the Echo and its Alexa software that goes with it is really, I don't know about one of the first, but certainly one of the most recognizable um, and in, you know, affordable Internet of Things products. And, and it is, pro- is a really good example of what it, the Internet of Things can look like in your home and right. what a connected home looks like. Um, and... You know, it's the Amazon's leading to me one of the leaders in the market already because they have this, you know, relatively affordable smart speaker that does a lot of things and shows off this kind of brand of technology. Yeah, they have the really dash buttons. Well. Yeah, the dash buttons. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just kind of talk about the state of Internet of Things and you know whether we see uh, this as kind of a fad or a reality because yeah. you know if this is using staying on this amazon example um is if this is something that amazon is designing streaming services around they're doubling down on this this is real to amazon this is something they're investing time and money into um is it going to pay off is it going to stick around um do people even know what internet of things is when someone sees the iot acronym do does everyone know what that means um and so yeah like i said this idea of the connected home is a good example of what it looks like on a consumer level but it's just the general the internet of things is kind of this catch-all term that refers to this growing world of interconnected household and industrial devices so everyday products and machines can now kind of be embedded with chips and sensors and different technology to process data or interact with people or other electronic devices i said the uh smart speaker can you know turn on lights set your thermostat and whatnot um you can also ask it questions as well so yeah it's like so like like apple siri like a can be siri like, that does things for your house as exactly well. yeah yeah so um it's echo smart speaker like we've said now it, great example of what it is um but like I said, it's a kind of a catch-all term at this point. So there's a lot of things that fall into this umbrella. Um, wearable technology, to some extent, is an example, especially when you're kind of using 
wearable tech that interacts with like your phone or okay so like your apple watch your fitbit yeah uh, that's that's an example of because it's kind of this smart thing that you wear you know it's not a traditional phone or computer it's this this regular product that's been technologied out (laughs) um uh advanced kind of in-car technology so um the, it's the, you, there are a hundred examples now of like the press a button and talk to your car and it right. does certain things um interacting with your car in that way um commercially though uh there's a lot of commercial applications basically just um in embedding certain like industrial machines with chips that can then read and track like performance and efficiency so companies know okay, maybe there's something wrong with this machine or this machine is putting out X number of things. Okay. Um, a lot of industrial uh, applications like that. I've even seen an example of uh, um, cities installing like smart trash cans that are embedded with chips that can then alert the government to or the alert the proper department to when certain trash cans are full and need to be changed. Um, that's, that's an example. Um, so yeah, like we said, I want to talk about the, some of the big name people that are making the products already. Okay. Amazon, like we said, with the smart speakers, also the dash buttons, which are the little click a button and it reorders your tied grocery pods or, uh, do you, do you have those? I don't have any, no. I'm kind of tempted to use them, but. It just it's also just so easy to do it and you know, do it on my phone yeah, as yeah. well. So uh, yeah, I, it's kind of it has a novelty to it. Yeah. Um I think Amazon would point you to the fact that they've p- sold a lot of them and there's a lot and they've constantly been expanding the amount of w- ones that they offer. Yeah. I would push back on that by saying that it's because Amazon has basically been giving them away for free. <laughs> um, they were they were like nine ninety nine plus sudden, and then you if, when you buy one, you get a ten dollar credit for the first purchase you make on it. So it's basically pays for itself the first time you right. use it. Um, and I think that's why they were able to get thousands and thousands of these out there. Yeah, but I guess like I see, I can definitely see it for ordering laundry detergent and paper towels and toilet paper, like very like home efficiency products but when you like tap it for food like that then yeah that weirds me out but Mm -hmm. i also am not a huge fan of online grocery shopping Mm -hmm. like getting groceries delivered so that could just be a personal thing weren't i feel like uh the writing team was talking about uh in the latest batch of updates there was something absurd that, oh, it was tr- Trojan brand condoms that Amazon <laughs> added to the dash button list. Well, wow. that, that one was like just hilarious to me. Um, but moving past Amazon, uh, Alphabet uh, slash Google, I guess it was, mm-hmm. Go- it was Google when they bought Nest, which right. is this um, home monitoring system. Yeah. It's the smart thermostat. And is it also security cameras as yeah. well? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you get a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, I think they're most known for their the, the thermostat. The smart thermostat Which thing. would be amazing to have. Yeah, they're cool. They're neat devices yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, IBM uh, kind of taking its uh, Watson technology. Okay. IBM has partnered with Cisco um, this is this is a good example of an industrial uh, industrial application. IBM and Cisco dot, got together. IBM gave them the Watson technology. Um, basically, the idea is that they're creating a this network of um, edge devices and endpoint things that provide real time feedback for oil and gas companies, manufacturing, shipping in the mining industry and it's all like i described before putting these chips on um to the machines and then using cisco's network to be able to have like instant feedback on performance and efficiency and whatnot um that's really which is yeah innovative a real world technology and a commercial application shows that it's not just this neat thing that you put in your house yeah um and uh, Apple, Apple 
you know the Apple Watch. I think you could you could use as, a, like I said, wearables are kind of an example. Mm-hmm. Um, they're almost their own thing at this point now. Though Apple has a patent though um, for something called local device awareness, um, which just basically describes an automated relationship between multiple close range devices. So th- that idea is that this kind of network of devices within your home and how they interact with each other and communicate with each other. So Apple has this existing patent for that, um, which Im- certainly implies that Internet of Things is on their radar, um, which to me, and that's why I'm bringing up the industrial applications and the, how these companies are looking at the situation, because if we want to answer this question of, is this a fad or a reality? To me, it implies that it's it really is a reality because, you know, I don't want to just say, these companies are investing a ton of money into it, so it's real and it's going to stick around because companies have been wrong on trends before. But it seems like something that makes life easier for a lot of people. It makes doing business easier for companies. Um, it is the technology is being created is here already is being created still. Um, and it also this kind of umbrella term has become something where the internet of things has just endless possibilities of, of not to use the word again, but things that it could be, yeah. <laughs> that could be incorporated into um, it. So, yeah. And like, to me, when I see internet of things, I think, I don't know what to think. Mm-hmm. And, but it's like, it's a very trendy, it's a hot button issue, but really the, the current applications aren't trendy. They're not hot button. They're, common there for the day-to-day consumer mm-hmm. which is pleasantly surprising yeah it just and then making your life just a little bit easier yeah making businesses run more efficient making cities run more efficient with the yeah. trash can example and then making your homes run more efficient yeah it's almost to the point where it's something that everyone can get behind i, I don't i don't yeah. think that there's anybody out there who's like oh this internet of things man <laughs> They're yeah. come, the machines are coming <laughs> after us. You know, it's just simple applications that make, like you said, life easier on the consumer. Yeah. Efficiency, the increased efficiency on, in, you know, for governments and businesses. And, you know, it, and before we wrap up, I wanted to point to at least one example of, you know, we're seeing these patents, we're seeing Apple with these patents, IBM teaming up with Cisco. Amazon's Echo smart speaker is relatively new still. Um, the, where we already are for sure seeing the effects is in um, the people who are making the chips for these these technologies. So you're seeing a lot of semiconductor manufacturers shifting their focus away from traditional maybe like PCs or mobile devices or whatever we were making chips for traditionally and starting to invest more in Internet of Things and seeing that pay off. So um, So Intel. Right. Um, So Intel, through the first six months of the year, Intel's IoT group has grown 12.5% and that IoT group is on pace to do $2 billion in revenue for Intel this year. Um, Texas Instruments is another great example They have this embedded processors division that kind of has a lot of different um, IoT chips that are applicable to IoT devices within it. Um, Are they the ones that make calculators? Yes, Texas Instruments. That's how. That's how. I I would venture to say that's how most people would recognize the brand. But yeah, they're the calculators in high school and whatnot. (laughs) Um, So, but it's actually a very small amount of the their revenue interesting um so they reported not in this latest earnings report they reported nine percent growth uh year over year in the um, their embedded processors division um nvidia is another good example they have done a lot with um this in car advanced Mm. in car technology um they have something called the tegra automotive processors Uh, that's kind of a branch of their company that they've seen a lot of growth in recently um, in its most recent report, Tegra grew thirty. Tegra revenues grew thirty percent year over year and four percent sequentially. 
Um, and you know, it doesn't, it, I, I don't have to tell, remind everyone this, that semiconductors have been one of the better businesses all year, um, as far as performance on the market. Um, and it isn't because the people just randomly started buying computers again, or that phone sales have been through the roof this year that, you know, it's because they're adapting to these changing demands in the industry, in the market. And, and one of the, the new demands is for, um, chips to use for Internet of Things products. Yeah. So this, so this whole conversation, proof that it's real, yeah, has gotten me thinking of Bluetooth mm-hmm. and how far we've come, just from the simple use of Bluetooth. Yeah, and um, I, that could have been like the first example of yeah, I Internet mean, of Things type of. I still, because I still use Bluetooth to connect my phone to my car or mm-hmm. my wireless speaker or my phone to my wireless speaker so it's those simple day-to-day things just like i don't know like a whole new grand scale yeah this is bluetooth on steroids this isn't touch a car in my butt touch a button in my car and call mom because (laughs) the city has made um talking on cell phones uh illegal while you're driving which is a very real part of my life (laughs) all of those things are true but uh this is touch no buttons and just talk to a thing laying on your desk and have the temperature go down three degrees in your house without moving. Mm -hmm. Um, So Bluetooth on steroids almost is how you could look at it. Almost, yeah. So yeah, fad or reality, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll have to see throughout, you know, in the future if it sticks around or if people are interested in these these kind of consumer level products. Um, But to me, it does look like the demand is starting to be there, seeing that with the growth in these IoT divisions of these chip makers. Um, and you're seeing companies like Amazon double down on their products for these things. So um, I'm glad we ha- were able to have this conversation. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it's been something I've been uh, interested in covering um, and certainly something that... Um, a lot of folks could use some explanation on Definitely. it for sure. And it helps that it's becoming, that we're seeing more concrete examples of what it was. Because mm-hmm. even just a year ago, it was probably 10 times more vague than it is today. And mm-hmm. that's saying something. So. Exactly. All right. Well, I think that just about does it for this week. Um, as always, you can find our full coverage for all of these stories um, and we have plenty of coverage on the site uh, for Internet of Things, um, stocks to look out for. Um, and you can find the links for all of these in the corresponding article. Um, and thank you for joining us this week. And we will see you next week.